Hey there, welcome. I'm going to do another quick uh, PlayPap tutorial following on from the previous episode, which was just creating a sign in and create user account using PlayPap in Unity. Today, we're just going to be doing a device ID login. So, using device ID on a mobile device or just any device actually using the custom ID as well. Let's get into it. Here we have our Unity scene. Uh, the only thing that's different from the last video is that we have this sign in with device button over here now. And let's just get started. So in our user account manager script, um, from the previous video, we've got the create accounts and we've got the sign in, both following a very uh, simple PlayFab API um, call over here with the email address, username, and password for the create account, and the sign in just using the username and password there. So we're going to create another little section over here just with the header tag and or with the comment tag, sorry. This is going to be sign in with device ID. And we're going to start off by getting that device ID first, depending on what the device is. If it's a mobile device, we need to also do uh, determine or get the, the ID specifically for Android versus iOS. So we're going to do a, a void, oops, void get device ID. And we are then going to output so out string, and that's going to be for the Android ID. We're going to do the same for the iOS ID as well. And finally, we're going to do another one for the uh, custom ID. Okay, so those are the three parameters. Those are the three options that we can use to sign in with. Um, the Android one is going to be a Bit different to the iOS one and the iOS one once again a bit different to the custom ID. So we need to determine uh, what platform we're currently using um, and because these are also out uh, parameters we need to front load or already load these initialize these variables. So we're just going to do Android ID equals string dot empty and we're going to do the same for the other two the iOS and for custom. Right, then we need to determine what the platform is. So we can use uh, if application dot platform is equal to, um, and then that's going to be runtime platform dot, we are looking for, uh, we're starting with Android. There we go, runtime platform is Android. We're going to do else if the application dot platform is equal to the runtime platform. And this time it's going to be the iPhone player, which is iOS, if you're not aware. And then else that's going to be our custom ID. Okay, so the last one's quite easy. Uh, we can just say custom ID is equal to, um, and that we're going to get from system info dot device unique identifier. So you can use this for all platforms. The difference is that um, on iOS, every time there's a new install or update of the application, apparently it changes this unique identifier, which wouldn't be ideal uh, in a case like this, where we're wanting to use that exact device ID to get the same information back from PlayFab. So we're going to do it a little bit differently there. And with the Android one, um, I've got mixed uh, responses between using the unique identifier, uh, the device unique identifier, and also the fact that apparently it also brings up a pop-up to say, do you want to make phone calls or stuff? Um, and yeah, from a security point of view, if your uh, application is asking you to make phone calls or access uh, that kind of functionality, then you're going to be a bit... Um, you know, weary of that. So I'm going to use the method that is described in the PlayFab um, example under the silent, silent something or other uh, example. And yep, so we're just going to be copying that and I'll drop the link to that reference uh, to that script in the comment section. But for the Android stuff, uh, we're going to do an Android Java class and we're going to call this UP for Unity Player. That's going to equal a new Android class. And in a string, we're going to say com.unity 
three D small D. No, all small. Dot layer and then dot unity layer. Right, then the next one is going to be uh, Android Java object, and that's going to be parent activity, and that's going to equal our Unity player uh, get statistic, and the statistic we're getting is the Android Java object, or it's of type Android Java object, and we are going to get that with parent activity. Uh, once we've got that, then we're going to need another Android Java object. This is going to be content resolver. And that's going to equal the current uh, activity dot call. And we are then going to call of type Android Java object once again. And we are using the get content resolver key there okay uh, last one is an android java class and that is then secure equals new android java class and in inverted commas that's going to be android dot provider dot settings dollar sign secure end that line and now for the finale the android id can now equal secure dot call static we are using the type string we're going to say get string and we're using the content resolver and we are getting the android id from that like I said, these few lines over here are um, copied directly from the uh, silent login example that's on the Playfab repo, which I'll link in the comments. Right, for iPhone or for iOS, we're going to say iOS ID equals, and we're going to get that from Unity Engine.iOS.device.vendor identifier. So this vendor identifier is apparently safer to use uh, than the device unique identifier or more reliable to use than the unique uh, the device unique identifier. So that is it for getting the specific device ID. Now we're gonna use that device ID to perform the, uh, the login silently. Uh, for that, we're going to do a public void because we want to access this functionality from the, the UI button. And we're gonna do sign in with device and first thing we're going to do is get that device id and it's going to be our string android id out string ios id and out string and that's going to be the custom id so we get all of those. Um, these are our parameters, like I said, so we have access to all of these uh, variables now further down the function call, uh, the function stack. So now we can just start working with it uh, by checking for if it is null or empty. So if we're not using any of uh, one of these identifiers, it'll be empty. So we can say we're gonna go with Android first. So if uh, Android ID or rather if string dot is null or empty and we're going to do android id then we're going to do that else if string dot is null or empty i'm going to check the ios id and finally we're going to do else if string dot is null or empty and we're going to check the custom id for that last one Okay, so with Android, um, we're going to follow the exact same process as we've done before. Uh, following the same formatting here, we use the API, the client API. We then call the function that we want to use. We create a new instance of whatever request is associated with that uh, function. 
And then we follow it on with two callbacks, one for the response and one for the error as well. Okay, so over here, we're gonna say playfab client API. We're gonna log in with Android device ID, followed by new login with Android ID request. Then we're gonna say response, followed by an anonymous function there, and same for the error. And then we'll just expand this over multiple lines. There we go. Okay, so our login with Android device ID request, we can just press control space over here and find out what it requires. So it needs um, the device ID, which is going to then equal the Android ID. We need the OS. So operating system, we can get that from uh, system info dot device. Um, so the operating system, there we go. Uh, we can get the Android device as well, and that'll equal system info dot device model. And then we need the title ID, which is going to equal then playfab settings dot title ID. And finally, we also want to make sure that create account is true. So that if the account doesn't exist, we're just going to automatically create it, um, create a new set of all that information, and we can just log in later on. Right. So uh, let's also just add in a log over here for our insanity to say in with Android device ID. And then in the response, we can just say log. Successful login with Android device ID. And if it is an error, then we can just say unsuccessful. And let's then give it the error dot error error message like that. Okay. Um, and then let's just see further up. We've got uh, on sign in success, this event over here, and this event over here. These two will also need to just call as soon as uh, the as soon as it's been successfully logged in, right? So there we can just invoke the on uh, sign in success and on sign in failed with an error message, just like that. Cool. Okay, so that takes care of the Android side of that. Now for the iOS one, same exact process. Um, actually, just going to go ahead and copy this and change this to uh, iOS device ID. Then instead of Android, we might be able to just replace the words. Login with... iOS device ID. Yep, that is correct. That's correct. We can go um, device ID equals iOS ID. Device model equals device model. Operating system equals operating system. Title ID is correct. Create true. And then over here, iOS device. Okay, that was quite easy and simple uh, to just duplicate that, change it to login with iOS device ID. And then finally, if we are not logging in with either the Android device or the iOS device, we are going to just use a custom ID. So we're going to say login with custom ID then. Um, and for that, let's also just go once again, copy paste that. We're going to do login with custom ID. It's going to be a new login with custom ID request. The device ID, or this is going to be rather custom ID, is going to equal the custom ID. We don't need the operating system or the device model over here. We just need the title ID and we need the create account equals true over there. And then for that, it's going to be custom ID. Okay, that is that for signing in uh, with those three different methodologies there. 
and each of them also calls the same on signing success and on signing failed with an error message. So let's hook up the button to uh, this function over here, the UI, and test it out. So under account, we're going to go find options, content, sign in with the device. So there's the button and we've already got it hooked up. So under user account manager, sign in with a device and run that. Sign in with device, logging in with Android device ID, unsuccessful, invalid uh, input parameters. Okay, oh, I made one fatal mistake. Um, in my if statements, it needs to be if not empty. Successful login with custom ID. And there we go, plain and simple. Okay, that brings us to the end of this short tutorial. See you in the next one.